This buzz was too easy, so I made something a little bit harder. There's a buffer overflow. Good luck finding it. All right, so what functions are imported? What do these strings mean? Some of these functions seem similar. Obj dump, binary instrumentation, and anger. Okay, so I've downloaded this into Ida, and we'll take a look here. Uh, lots and lots of functions. Wow, so very many functions. Here's main. And all right, so there are these calls, lots of subroutines, printing fizz buzz, deeply nested. This routine here basically asks, this is the fizzbuzz program. And it'll loop up to its parameter. And it'll return the number of times you get fizzbuzz correct. So that's all very exciting. Then they're like these functions, and then these have like more and more. Now, eventually, if you wander around long enough, you will find, let's see, eight one. functions that look like this. So this will do a fizz buzz and then it'll do these F get S's. Now, we know there's a buffer overflow, so what we want is for one of these F get S's to be too big. Okay, so we're gonna look at all these F get S's and we'll pipe that through grep. We'll look at the four lines before the F get S of 819F08. So if you look at the F get S, it looks like we need to only go back three spots before. And we're looking for F get S. So you can see there's the parameter, three lines before. That's a pretty good deal. So then what we can do is we can flip or the push, because we really are only interested in the push. We don't want the percent ease. And we want one that's gonna have a big number. So we'll look for like dollar zero x maybe three hex digits. Alright, so there we are at 808 AEA7. And here we have a big one. So we'll be looking at EVP minus 99, but we actually got to overflow there. So we have a 348 byte overflow inside the function 808AE73. All right, that's grand so far, but how in creation did we get to 808AE73? And so this is where Anger comes in. I got a copy of Dijkstra's algorithm from the internet. I made a little bit of change to it right here. So I said, I'm going to pass in the graph, which is an anger list of functions. I'm going to get all of the call sites for the function, then find the function corresponding to the call target. Those are the destinations. I also changed this weight to just add one. I, I don't care about having a weighted graph. So with those two changes, again, I go through every call site in a function. I get the call target, the function of the call target. Those are the destinations. I'm going to find a path from main to 808AE73. So it prints out this path, and that's actually a list of functions. So then 
I now have these, these crazy functions. So I've managed to make it there. And that path looks something like this. So it was 814C22C through 8142AF1, 8143FFD, 8131B8 to get to 808AE73. So these functions are, you know, if we look at this 8142AF1, 8142AF1, they're sort of irritating because I want to get this one wrong, so I go in, but then for this function, I want to get it right three times so that I skip over it. And I need to do that like a bunch of times until I get to the thing I want. And I started doing that manually. It took forever and was super tedious. So here we have automating it. So we're going to loop through all of the calls in the function. At the beginning of the function, if you look, there's this call that I want to skip over. And in the other function, so in main, there's also this like weird, I don't know, it's not really stack canary, maybe it's stack canary, where it just pops the thing on the stack. Um, so we go through all of these. If it's a call to the put s function, then we don't we don't need it. If it's the thing that we're looking for, we're done. And otherwise, we want to get the number correct. So in main, we want to get all of them right. We just need to get all of those things right. So for all of these calls, all these we need to get right till we get to our destination so that we jump back out quickly. For these, we want to sort of alternate getting them wrong, right, wrong, right, so that we can nest as deep as possible. So these we were just getting all right. Here, if it was calling this function, we wanted to get it wrong. And otherwise, if it's not put us, we want to get it right. We loop until we found the next thing. When we run that, it loops for a while. It gives us this big list of number of wrongs and rights. So that's grand. So then that gate is basically about this far. And I got fizzbuzz. So fizzbuzz, if you're a multiple three and five, you say fizzbuzz. Otherwise, if you're a multiple three, you say fizz. Multiple five, you say buzz. And otherwise, you just say the number. So once I get to 8109, 8109, F08. This one, I just wanted to get to 808AE73. So I need to get it here. So I needed to have this fizzbuzz return five. So you'll see one more five. And here I need the result to be one to get to this long get us. So there's my one. So these things were all automatically generated. I add the five and the one. All right, now what happens? So I connect, if I need to get it right, I call fizzbuzz, get it right the correct number of times. If I want to get it wrong, then I simply print the number three, which is going to be wrong because it always starts counting at one. If you look at that fizzbuzz routine, um, so I just send three. Three will be wrong for one. Then I have 121 A's, and here's an exciting thing. There's flag.txt. So this function here just prints the flag for me. So I want to change my return address to be that. That's 121 A's. So the reason we know that's 121 is because we can look at 
the method. So that's 808AE73. And we can see Um, all right, so we look like looks like it's only 99 there from the EBP. The stack pointer so you sort of expect like 99, but then we have to be aligned. That's the issue. This needs to be aligned on a proper boundary. When we get to there, Uh, we get that to 121. And then we print out that pointer of the return address. So I also basically did the same thing just locally so that I could actually run this thing in a debugger. And that helped me find the 121 also. All right, so then when I do all that, oh yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a virtual environment for anger. So deactivate that. Where it goes, we'll come up with the flag. where I put that. See, it's printed out my local flag. It's looping through these. There's my flag. You found me. Okay, so let's review basically the, the scripts I had to come up with here. So this solved.py, again, we have Dijkstra's algorithm modified to use the anger finding call sites there and changing that weight addition to be one. It came from this URL. We've gotten the control flow graph. We want to find a path from the main function to this function, which had that overflow, which we found by looking through all of the calls to fgetS. We then here walk through getting this number correct. Now, getting this number correct was a little bit exciting. We basically go to the second block in the file. We get its disassembly, and we get that push. So if we're looking at like this, we'll see this push in the second block. So here's my second block. When I disassemble it, I get line 0, 1, 2, and then I grab the end of it. So I get the second line, I grab the end of the line, it's this hexadecimal integer, and I bring it back. So I'm looping, and I'm doing this sort of these multiple phases to get to the function I want, creating that list of how many times I need to get it right and wrong. And there you have it.